So this is how you enjoy Marmite optimally. You get your bread. Mine is slightly toast because I forgot that I had toasted it a bit before. Put it in the toaster. Set it for however long it takes to get the toast how you like it. So once it's popped, you get the toast. I recommend having it pretty brown for optimum crispness. And then you get your spreadable products. Some people like to just have the Marmite neat, but I like to have um, a spread. Um, it's fake butter and um, Marmite. So get cutlery knife. get to work. So first get your butter or your fake butter or your sunflower spread or something to lubricate the um, incredibly toasted toast and then oh, get a nice amount on there and then do a even coat. This is the part where I don't actually do it evenly because I'm trying to do this well. Hunched over a camera, so just get a nice amount on there. Not too much and not too much in one place, i.e. not like this. Let's just get a nice covering on there because you want it to be easy to spread the marmite later. Incredibly sticky. Let's get some more. Like I said, you can just avoid this step and put the marmite straight on, but um, I actually prefer the taste when you have the spread on as well. But sometimes when I really get the craving for the black goodness of the marmite. Well, it's brown. Um, I just avoid this step. But I think definitely for Marmite beginners, it um, helps to bring out the good qualities of the Marmite. There we go. Nice. Now for the next step, I have cleaned my knife of all traces of fake butter because you don't want to get that in your Marmite. And now for the meat and potatoes, or oh, the Marmite and potatoes bit, you get your lovely Marmite and then you don't want to make the mistake of getting too much on your toast at once because I think that's where everyone goes wrong when they try Marmite. Now, being a seasoned Marmite um, connoisseur, I generally have quite a lot, but I'm going to put a bit less on than usual. Actually, this is probably far too much. This is probably how much I usually have, but I'm going to split it between both breads because it's very um, it's very concentrated as is the name yeast extract it's um, yeah it's it's just a concentrated byproduct of making beer so actually if you smell it um, you can definitely smell sort of it's kind of a similar thing to when you take a glass of beer and sniff it. it kind of smells just like that. Kind of. <laughs> well, yeah, anyway. So I'm spreading the Marmite over the toast thinly and as evenly as I can possibly get it because it's very sticky, as I said. And in this case, I'm 
and of mixing it with the spread that I put on earlier. It looks absolutely disgusting, but assure, I assure you that um, it is good. Now, there we go. In fact, I think I might have put a bit too much spread on, but then again, my spread to Marmite ratio is usually a bit different because I have more Marmite on usually. Um, okay, so the next part is the part that is, it, it makes the Marmite on toast even better and people often don't realise this, but if you take a sharp knife and I'll just try to show this, cut the toast into strips. It actually does have a name. In the UK, I don't know about anywhere else, but these strips of toast are called soldiers and because they're, they're upright and they're like soldiers and usually you just have plain soldiers or soldiers with um, spread like this stuff and then you dip it in an egg but ever since I was a tiny child being introduced to Marmite um, I have loved Marmite on soldiers. It just breaks it down and makes, makes it more. I don't know. Maybe it's just a nostalgia thing, but it definitely tastes better. And there we have it optimised yumminess Marmite on toast, cut into soldiers for extra palatability. Mmm, it's good. Oh, I had crumbs on my thumb. <laughs>